voted against. They vetoed. That's right. That's right. Oh. Financial veto. Right. Question number two, Jamie Strange. Mr Speaker, my question is to the Minister of Housing and Urban Development and asks, has the Minister received any reports on the forecast rate of house building with and without KiwiBuild? Before I call the Honourable Phil Twyford, I'll indicate, I mean, I'm, I'm getting a bit sick of it, but the opposition have just lost the question they gained because of interjections during that question. The Honourable Phil Twyford. Yes, advice that I have received from the Ministry of Business, Innovation and Employment shows that without KiwiBuild, the number of houses will peak in 2019 below what is needed and then rapidly fall away. But with KiwiBuild, the rate of house building will continue to increase so that we can start to fix the shortfall of 71,000 houses we inherited from the past government. Supplementary. Does the MB modelling show that KiwiBuild houses will be additional to homes that would otherwise be built? Yes, it does. The modelling shows that we can build more homes, not displace work that would be done anyway, and indeed, without KiwiBuild, the number of homes built would fall, according to MB modelling. Entry. How do the projections for home construction compare with previous home building levels? Well, the official modelling, which was available to the past government, shows that under the policies of that government, home building would have peaked at 34,500 a year in 2019 far below the record of 39,734 set in 1974 by the Kirk Labour government. Yeah. Now, with KiwiBuild, the number of houses built will ramp up to exceed 40,000, the largest number ever, and on to set new records. To help achieve this, the government will invest in more training, bringing in skilled workers from overseas, and backing factory building to boost productivity. Yeah, yeah. Very good. Mr. Davis. What plans does the government have to ensure the additional houses built under the KiwiBuild programme are affordable for people on lower incomes? Well, I thank the member for that question. The houses themselves will be affordable. We will build with density at scale and using off-site manufacturing to reduce costs. To further improve affordability, under the Labor Greens Confidence and Supply Agreement, we will be developing a rent-to-own scheme or similar progressive home ownership model as part of our KiwiBuild program. Good work. Supplementary. Uh, Davis. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. What is the problem our new rent-to-own scheme or progressive home ownership scheme is seeking to address? Well, home ownership is one of the best paths out of poverty, providing stability of tenure and an incentive to save. And under the past government, the dream of home ownership has been slipping further and further out of reach. We're going to change that with KiwiBuild, building affordable homes and providing a rent-to-buy option that will make it even easier for families to own a home of their own. We are going to restore the opportunities for a greater number of New Zealanders to own their own homes. Very good. Supplementary question. The Honourable Michael Woodhouse. To the Minister, will he commit to matching or improving on the record of the previous Minister and Government of a 15 per cent compounded increase in uh, building supply year on year? We're going to build 100,000 affordable homes for first home buyers and restore the dream of affordable home ownership. P a point of order, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I understand I can't ex uh, accept a yes or no answer, right. but the question was about the rate of growth, not about the number of Kiwi built houses. No, I'm, I'm going to ask the member to repeat his question and the uh, and the Minister have another go. He did introduce the rate of growth very clearly uh, into his uh, primary answer. Will he commit to matching the record of the previous Minister and Government of a 15 per cent compound increase in the rate of houses being built under the previous Government? I will commit to a rate of growth that's needed to achieve our target of delivering 100,000 affordable homes for first home buyers. Question number three, the Honourable Stephen Joyce. Point of order, Mr Speaker. A point of order. Uh, Mr Speaker, I'd just like to raise an issue in relation to question three.